A Thing of Beauty by John Keats. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness. But will keep a bower quiet for us and asleep, full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing. Therefore, on every morrow, are we reading a flowery band to bind us to the earth. Spite of despondence, of the inhuman dearth of noble natures, of the gloomy days, of all the unhealthy and overdarkened ways made for our searching, yes, in spite of all, some shape of beauty moves away the pall from our dark spirits. Such the sun, the moon, trees old and young sprouting a shady boom for simple sheep. And such are daffodils with the green world they live in and clear rills that for themselves a cooling covert make against the hot season. The mid forest break rich with a sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms and such too is the grandeur of the dooms we have imagined for the mighty dead. All lovely tales that we have heard or read, an endless fountain of immortal drink pouring unto us from the heaven's brink. A beautiful, lovely poem by the worshipper of beauty, John Keats. He expresses a philosophy in the poem, and the philosophy is contained in the first two lines of the poem itself. The poet says, A thing of beauty is a joy forever. That is, a thing of beauty, an object of beauty, say for example natural beauty, the sight of a beach with uh, countless uh, rolling waves one after the other and crashing on a rocky beach or a snow-capped mountain, uh, the white expanse stretching as far as the sight can go. Such beautiful objects, the blooming flowers, the moon, the sun, everything, all the objects of natural beauty they leave an indelible mark upon our memory plane and continue to give us joy and happiness for a long, long time. All the objects of beauty in the world are a constant and eternal source of joy and happiness for us. For us. Not only do we derive joy and happiness when we witness them, when we observe them, but we continue to experience a sense of joy and happiness for a long time even when those beautiful sights have vanished from our minds because when we observe them they leave an indelible mark upon our memory plane whenever we close our eyes they flesh into our mind and we experience the same kind of joy and happiness which we had observed in the presence of the first-hand experience the poet says, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. That is, an object of beauty is a, an eternal, a never-ending source of joy and happiness for us. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness. Its loveliness increases. That is the charm, the appeal of an object of beauty to a human heart never diminishes with the passage of time. As the time passes, the appeal, the charm of an object of beauty only increases. It becomes more lovely, it becomes more beautiful, it, be it has a greater appeal to the human heart. And, <clears throat> but we keep a bar quiet for us, these objects of beauty act like a power for us. What is a power? A power is a cool, shady cluster of trees. And like cool shady cluster of trees provides us a shield, a guard, a protection from the hot burning rays of the sun. In the same way, beautiful objects act as shield and guard and protect us against the tragedies, the miseries, pains and sufferings of life. Even when the life is a little tragic and painful, uh, we do not lose hope because of the presence of beautiful objects around us. So they, they guard us against frustration, depression and hopelessness. Like a bower of trees provides us a welcome guard and protection against the hot burning rays of the sun. 
and, uh, and so and but will keep a baba quiet for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams that is you know because the beautiful object they leave an indelible mark upon our mind and whenever we go to sleep they flash into our dreams and uh, uh, this is how the beautiful objects make our sleep a joyful experience for us and help because they bring us mental peace and joy and that mental peace okay. and joy ensures good physical and mental health for us and quiet breathing that is we derive a sense of satisfaction from the objects of natural beauty we see that God has uh, given us such valuable treasure all around us so uh, we are rich that way and we have a sense of satisfaction and this satisfaction itself becomes further source of joy and happiness for us and then the poet says <coughs> sorry therefore on every morrow because uh, these beautiful objects are very useful for us they, they protect us against the miseries, pains and sufferings of life, make our sleep a joyful experience for us, ensure good mental and physical health and bring to us a sense of satisfaction because, because these are the blessings of beautiful objects for us and therefore, therefore on every morrow are we reading a flowery band to bind us to the earth. That is, that is every day in the morning when we get up, we are filled due to the presence of beautiful objects all around us we are filled with a desire to live this life even more because our desire to live gets strengthened because of the presence of beautiful objects uh, and uh, you know uh, that is the that is one more purpose that the beautiful objects fulfill in our life they strengthen our bond with life by strengthening our desire to live our bond our bond with the earth gets stronger and stronger day by day so and then the next idea unit uh, starts here spite of despondence of the inhuman dearth of noble natures of the gloomy days of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways made for our searching that is this life is although full of hopelessness and despair, despondence. Despondence means despair, disappointments, uh, hopelessness. The life is full of disappointments, failures and hopelessness. Then what is the next? Of the inhuman dearth of noble natures. That is our life. You know, if we look around, we find a severe lack. Inhuman dearth means severe lack of noble natures means of people with noble deeds or lofty character there is severe lack of uh, a lot of dearth of uh, people with noble deeds and lofty character but in spite of that then what next of the gloomy days that is our life is full of sadness at times and of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways that is uh, we resort to unhealthy irreligious and sinful acts in order to earn material prosperity in life our life is full of irreligious, sinful and unhealthy acts, unhealthy ways of life. But in spite of the presence of all these things, when all these things fill our heart with sadness, at that time, what happens? In spite of all, some shape of beauty moves away the wall. That is, in spite of the presence of all these negative things which fill our heart with sadness, some shape of beauty appears before our eyes and removes the blanket, the pall of sadness from our dark, hopeless and disappointed spirit and fill our heart with fresh joy and happiness. Then the poet goes a step further. He describes some examples of natural bounty as to how God has gifted us invaluable treasure which is present all around us. The examples of beauty from nature, the sun, that is the beauty of the rising sun in the morning, the beauty of the western, uh, the, uh, the horizon when the sun goes down in the evening, the red, the red bark coin hanging over the horizon, the entire western horizon splashed with uh, a yellowish and uh, a reddish shade 
The entire scene looks very beautiful. The moon, the moon is beautiful, isn't it? Uh, the sight of the moon playing behind the clouds like a small child, you know, every now and then in the sky. The stars studded sky. The scene is beautiful. The trees are beautiful. The trees all around us. Old means the grown up ones, the big ones, and the young means the small saplings or short trees, small trees. Uh, sprouting a shady boon for simple sheep that is presenting a boon of a blessing of cool shade for all the people of the world simple sheep is a biblical reference like in the holy bible the entire humanity has been described as uh, sheep and lord jesus christ is presented as a shepherd that loves and looks after the entire sheep so simple sheep refers to all the people of the world and then the poet says, and such are daffodils with the green world they live in. That is the sight of the daffodil flowers blooming with a cover of green around looks extremely charming and appeals, has a strong appeal to the heart. And clear rills, the water streams of crystal clear silver shining water running in the form of a brook through the forest. Let us see what it makes. Uh, and clear rills that for themselves a cooling covert make. You must have read the poem Brook, the Brook by Lord Alfred Tennyson. Uh, the water streams, you know, makes a long journey. And uh, it seems as if in order to snatch a few moments of rest and to protect itself from the hot burning rays of the sun, from the scorching heat of the sun, it raises, you know, a cluster of trees on its either side and makes for itself a cool sheltering place so that it can snatch a few moments of rest before resuming its onward journey. So that water stream of crystal clear silver shining water running through the woods looks beautiful. And then the mid forest break that is the forests full of fir trees look beautiful. Rich means made more beautiful. The forest full of fir trees or look already very beautiful but they become even more beautiful when something happens when what happens rich with the sprinkling of the fair musk rose blooms that is when we find that white roses white musk roses are blooming here and there in a tree in a forest full of fir trees this breast the presence of uh, the white musk rose flowers uh, makes the forest look even more beautiful and then the poet says, and such too is the grandeur of the dooms. The poet says, very surprisingly, that there is beauty even in death. How come death is beautiful? And it's, a, it's, a, it's an important question that is repeatedly asked in the board examinations. Okay, how is grandeur? How does the poet perceive grandeur in the dooms? That is, how is death beautiful? The poet says, and such too is the grandeur of the dooms. That is, there is beauty even in death. The poet says there is beauty in the death of those great kings and warriors who sacrificed their lives, embraced death, protecting the freedom of their motherland and guarding the higher virtues of humanity. Those great kings and warriors who sacrificed their lives for the higher virtues of humanity or while protecting and guarding the freedom of their motherland. Their death is beautiful because it inspires the future generations, the posterity to be ready to make such sacrifices. So because their death is inspiring for the posterity, there is beauty in their death. And then we are so and such too is the grandeur of the doom we have imagined for the mighty dead. All lovely tales that we have heard or read, all the lovely stories, the charming beautiful stories written by the great authors of the world have an eternal charm and eternal appeal to the reader. Like Shakespeare's plays hold a very strong appeal to the people who love English literature. They are read with equal sense of curiosity even nowadays. So literature, beautiful literature never becomes old. It holds an eternal charm for the reader. So all lovely tales that we have heard or read, an endless fountain, all these beautiful objects are like an endless, eternal fountain of immortal drink that is nectar. 
it is like a perennial fountain of nectar the immortal drink being showered upon us by God Almighty all these beautiful things the treasure the natural treasure and other beautiful things in our life they are like blessing of God they are like an eternal perennial fountain being showered upon us in the form of God's blessings from the heavens above an endless fountain of immortal drink pouring unto us from the heavens break. Thank you.